In this video, I'll cover how you can convert an XML to a flat file uh, in two different ways. Um, we see this a lot that you need to do some conversion um, for whatever reason that you need. And let's look at this uh, content that we have here. So we have <coughs> payload. It has multiple different elements. I know that there is a built-in content conversion, but I think that it has some limitations. And if you want to do multiple conversions, there is different ways that you can go around it and have much more control over this uh, this content. So the first way you can do this is uh, we would add this to the figaf tool and we will use the figaf tool to create this. So here we have, we will then create a new script. This is, uh, we'll start with an XSLT. I think that simplifies things quite a bit. Uh, XML to flat version. And we have the payload out here. We can just copy it here. Uh, if we're creating a test case, we could reuse it from here. Now it comes up with a default one. We can uh, try to run it, but it's not really useful. So we can go in here, create, add our uh, minimized payload just to uh, convert the following its element <laughs> name B and name C should be pre -ist. and we can then generate it we are here using uh, uh, open AI APIs, you can use ChatGPT to do this. Uh, we just like it to have it in one framework. So let's see here if it creates it. We can take it here, we can convert it here, we can run it first locally. So we can see here it does create the value, name value A, B, C. Um, that's a little wrong. Um, so it, I guess it's just concatenating the name. Um, with these, and I guess that's not really what we want. Um, um, and it has this equal sign in, so yeah, that should we could uh, update this. Um, come on. And then we have the fields from name A, which is then uh, and obviously with our XSLT knowledge, we should also be able to uh, fix this. And that this is probably a good idea to be able to do something because it's not always giving the right result. So now it uh, looks pretty good. Here uh, we can do something uh, just if, if it worked maybe uh, for should be fixed. Let's see if it can figure that one out. So one of the things you can do with XSLT is you can also make it fixed length uh, files uh, where you specify the, the different length uh, uh, for each element and that can make it a little easier to, to read for some legacy systems. Um, 
So here it says that I put in 10 characters if it, we are in the name B. I'm not sure if this will work, but uh, let's give it a try. So we can see here it does have some naming on it. So let's just change this and add multiple names. Name B. We can see each of those is 10 characters. Oh. And we could also do something about the header uh, description for these things. Um, so. Let's see if that will work. Not really. Uh, I guess I would have value one, two, three. Ah, so it's adding it on the, the same element. Uh, not really ideal. No, it's not even adding it. Okay. Yeah, we could uh, otherwise this value name. So we have this extra cell. So if it goes in here, we have name C. We need, if we are in position one, we need to add these elements here. Name, uh, name C. Uh, but I guess this is never triggered. We can try to run it on the CPI system. So it's really easy to apply which one, which system you want to run it on. And, and no, actually one thing that's a bit strange. Why would you add something like this up here? Um, and not down here. Anyway, let's just say we are satisfied with this. We can upload it. Artifact is locked, so I am here. Oh, cancel. Let's try to upload again. So now we have uploaded it. And so obviously there is a lot of things you can explore with this uh, discard. And we have here, we can select this flat file conversion, save it as a version, and deploy it. I think we still have trace on, so let's see if we got 51 here. Deploy. So... So now here in the body, we can see the same content conversion that has happened here. It's really easy to, to work on, as you can see, it just simplifies the process. What if you want something more where you can configure the size a little more? Then one of the other uh, components we have is in here. We have a, a Groovy script that is, uh, we created this uh, GitHub project, Figar from uh, Converter. Our ideas with this was to make an iFlow or CPI component that was compliant with or compatible with the PI to CPI content converter. And therefore, if you're using it, it should work, uh, making the migration easier because you don't need to make any modifications. So that was why we, we created this and tried to make it a little easier for users to work on these things. Um, it comes with some some templates here you can explore and I've just used this uh, number seven down here. I think this is the, the element where I'm just exploring some of these different options. In it. Um, so what we can do here is we can open here and figure out it wasn't updated so we need to synchronize it. Synchronization finished. Now we can open the ID. I think I still have the that's not that one. It's 
So it's always a bit fun to see what you're doing when you're doing something similar. So here we can see we are creating this. We have defined that it is using name A, name B, name C. In the record site structure, uh, we can set our line endings. We can set here it is for line A, it is using uh, fixed content length um, with uh, 10, 5 characters into it. It's cutting, it's adding header line, uh, so we can change the, the settings on header line. I uh, cannot recall the correct way to do these. Um, And yeah, we can see here that there is, I think on the last one, we are creating some different begin and separators. Uh, <coughs> we add a header line also on this uh, with a fixed value into it. Um, but that seems like some of these things is, is missing. So it is, our idea was to make it compliant with what you had in the, the CPI one. Uh, but at least we can see that it converts it uh, to, to flat file with the relevant settings that is needed for this. So we set fixed length. Uh, we do have... And yeah, as we see here, it, it does convert it <coughs> into uh, content. Um, we have the, the value down here um, and it is adding these uh, these values as we would expect and here I think yeah so we've changed this one add so here begin and end separator uh, which means that this goes on the same line so all in all it makes it possible to do this conversion in a fairly simple way um, but I think in most cases we can then upload this into the, the CPI system. And edit. So I'll just check if it is selected here. So I'll just say the only one we have. We can save it as a version and deploy and thereby be able to, to actually explore these uh, these settings so here we can see it, it does convert this uh, in this format um, we build this content converter here to simplify the migrations um, and that is the, the main goal of it so we did not need to do as much when setting up these uh, these things I hope you like this and want to explore it uh, you can try it out uh, here on these things but I think a lot of cases the XSLT will give you a better result when working on uh, migrations from or conversion from XML to to flat file you could also have done it in in Groovy and that probably have looked quite the same thanks for watching